this goose when I first started flying I was as tall as you and skinny as a rail yes sir relax it's only gonna hurt for a little while I can beat him damn it I know I can beat him a foot race maybe everybody got all their fingers and toes sir good Stop, you're looking at me. I am, sir. What now? Way commander. General Green? Why? Did not take me into his confidence, sir. He flew in 30 minutes ago. Tell him I'll cut my debrief short and be right there. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, as you know, the machine. Why? Cut the tape. Buried your nose. Never drop your nose. There. You're pure vertical here. What's happening is the bogey is coming down to the top and you're trying to break his altitude. He can early turn you and boom. End of $20 million aircraft that the Marines on the ground are depending on for fire support. And more importantly, I have to pay a condolence call on your parents. Review this tape over and over and over again. Yes, sir. Just step outside with me for a moment, please. Contrary to anything you may think, Lieutenant, I have every confidence that you could fly the F-4. In the classroom, in the simulator, you're top of the class, and I respect that. But you get up there, and you perform way below your capabilities. Yes, sir, I don't know. I, I know what you do. I lay awake at night thinking. I go over every detail in my mind, and I think... I know you can think, Lieutenant. Now show me that you can fly. You think it's rough with me on your butt? You get a MiG back there, and it could be fatal. Now, we're going back up tomorrow. We're going to repeat that maneuver. Make the same mistake again, and you know where you're going to be? Yes, sir. See you in the morning. All right, sir. Joe, good to see you. Good to see you. 
to you too, sir. Is my readiness report in the wrong form or something, General? Oh, your readiness reports are fine. It's, it's a little more serious than that. How serious, sir? Show your ground. Vascular necrosis of the femoral head. Top of subject's hip bone is deteriorating. You could have had a heart attack. You could have had a stroke. No appeal, sir? Mm -hmm. No appeal. What's that, sir? Promotion warrant to Brigadier General on your new assignment. proof that there's life after flying. Sir, you married a beautiful woman. You have two beautiful children, now grandchildren. My kids are cocky, know nothing marine fighter pilots. My wife sits out there in the tarmac. She drinks 10 gallons a second at 1,400 miles an hour. When I ask her to roll over, my God, she rolls over. No desk, sir. Joe, no desk, no star. Now, before you get carried away and pull a hard knocks on me, this is what you're gonna do. 30 days leave, starting in 10 seconds. And when you get back, I'll see if I can get you a desk with wings on it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. How many years have we been together? 27? Uh, 29, in one capacity or another. We ever sit down together and have a drink? No, sir, I don't recollect we ever sat down and had a drink together. Face on. Let's have a drink, face on. Don't you know who that is? That's the most decorated fighter pilot the Marine Corps has on active duty. That's Hard Knocks. 22 kills and every air medal they've got. That's history you're looking at, man. History. Well, Colonel, it seems like we ought to drink to something. How many years have you been in the Corps, Top? 31 years and count. At my 30, that makes 61 years. The 61 years. 61 good years, sir. Excuse me, sir. Sir, I don't want to bother you, but uh, would you sell an argument for us? Sure. Most of the guys say you're a college graduate like the other racks. Legend says you came in at 17, a snuffy, just like us, sir. 16. I lied. I just won five bucks. Thank you, sir. Well, Colonel, what are you going to do with your 30 days leave? Maybe I'll go home for a while. Home? You're like me, Colonel. This is home. But there was a place I called home a long time ago. Stop, I gotta get going. I just wanted to tell you that you're the best maintenance chief I've ever had. Colonel, I'm the only maintenance chief you ever had. You've also been a good, good friend. And I thank you for that, Tom. Well, Colonel, you get your new assignment, get settled. Be sure and drop this old Tennessee boy a note, you hear? proud to salute every day for the last 29 years. 30 years from now, you people will be telling your grandchildren you were there the day that Colonel Joe Knox took his last flight as a fighter pilot. On behalf of every Marine who ever graced this uniform and every man in this room, I would like to say thank you, Hard Knox. Thank you.
go to the school, please. David, you get all through this. Ma, please. David, you better stop that crying please. immediately. Do you want the rest of these kids to see you carrying on like this? I don't when care. Do go home? Oh, you can't go home till the Friday of your second week. Don't worry, we'll take real good care of you. Well, what time do we eat? Corey J. Beasley, you just ate. Now, the next time you get hungry, you can sit Now, what am I going to do without you underfoot all the time, huh? Lots of pulling weights. It's good to be back. I could use the rest. Hey, you're not mad, are you? Mad? Just because Benji gave you Company A and stuck me with all the plebes and head cases of Company B? I'm not mad, I'm sick. I was gonna lodge an official protest, except I just checked my duty roster, and guess who else I got? Who? She wouldn't give you the time of day. Bet your buck. You're on. Hi, Cammie. You wouldn't happen to know what time Fuck it off, was. Fuck off, <laughs> You lose. Again. <laughs> Cammie! Wouldn't we make this just a little more pleasant on each other? But you promised that this year I'd be allowed to transfer to Greenbrier Prep. If things pick up a little in the market, maybe we can transfer you. That chance. Cammy. I'm fine. You fix your door. Sick. Do I get mine now, or do I have to stomp somebody first? Oh, I'm definitely into heavy metal. They come with the uniform, or I gotta rip off my own. You'll be given some articles of clothing later on today, but you'll have to wait to be fitted in the dress blues. Gee. Hey, Pops? I'm gonna get even with you for this. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Pop. That's your son, sir? No, that's my grandson. Firm but fair, huh? Yes, sir. Skip the fair. Thanks, Ma. Hey, sorry for the rush, hon, but I've got a one o'clock out of O'Hare. That's okay, Ma. Hey, I've got time for a kiss, though. Eric, you're gonna like it here much better than the other schools. I can feel it. Yeah. They got my Chicago number, my L.A. number, my service number. Listen, I gotta rush now, though. Ciao. You're our number one claim to fame. Your picture's on all our brochures. You've made the right choice for your child. Now, the atmosphere here is just what the doctor ordered for that boy. Firm, but fair. Joey? Joey Knox? Lila, that's old hard Knox himself. It's me, Joey. Benjamin. Little Benji? Benjamin Garfield? Used to follow you around like a puppy, you remember? <laughs> I remember. Well, so you came back to have a look at the old alma mater, huh? Yeah, good deal. We're doggone pleased to have you. Uh, listen, Joe, I've got kind of a tight rope time-wise, you know. This is my usual pony time, so if you'll excuse me. There used to be a plaque on it, but it fell off. Revolutionary hero, sir. Good old Sam. America's first Marine. I'm Joe Knox, GMA class of 50. Hart Knox? Colonel Hart? I'm Cadet Captain Gary Pasco, sir. 
It wasn't like this when I came here in sixth grade. There's no excuse for them letting my school get run down like that. Oh, there's the girls' dormitory. Girls? GMA accepts female cadets? Well, we only had five last year, but this year we're supposed to have close to 15. What do you think of that? Girls, I think they're great. A couple of them are really foxy, sir. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gary, it's nice meeting you. I'm gonna run over and see General Garfield. Uh, sir, the general's not here anymore. He's in a convalescent home. Sir. Joseph. General Garfield, sir. duty station, sir. They, yeah. they finally clipped your wings, did they? Yes, sir. Everything's going to be all right, son. Welcome home, Joseph Knox. Welcome home. Joseph, you can't fly at Mach 2 forever. Come back down to Earth with the rest of us for a while. Hello, Bill. I'm glad you came to see the school again. This will be our last year. You're not closing down GMA, are you, sir? You saw the grounds. Place is going to hell. I'm 87 years old. I can't run it anymore. Sir? With all due respect, I think you're making a big mistake shutting down GMA. It's one of the few military schools where working class people can send their children. I'm not afraid of death, Joseph. But I don't want to see my dream die. Sir, you, the school, have given me so much. I just wish there was something I could do for you. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. I don't know anything about schooling or kids. Sir, I'm not qualified. <laughs> no, no, sir. Generally, I'm not qualified. My name is Knox. K-N-O-X. Some of you people have chosen to come here. And some of you people have been forced to come here. Regardless of how or why, you have arrived. Whether you stay here seven days, seven weeks, seven months, or seven years, these grounds, these buildings, are going to become an important part of your life. Maybe a little run down, but you and I are going to change that. You and I are going to change a lot of things here. I'm going to introduce you people to a four-letter word that Webster's Dictionary defines like this. A sustained physical or mental effort to overcome obstacles and achieve an objective or result. That four-letter word, people, is work. Get accustomed to the sound of it. Because from this day forward, it is going to be an important part of your vocabulary. Thirty-five years ago, I stood on the spot where you people are standing now and heard General Garfield say something that I've carried with me every day since. He said, people, not one among you needs to earn my respect. You have it. It is your birthright. But God help those among you that lose it. Cadets, you have my respect. Dismiss the battalion.
Italian? Company! Uh, dismissed. Excuse me, Colonel. Hi, I'm Marilyn Cole. Joan Knox. I'm the principal. Oh? Surprise? When I was a cadet here, the teachers were all male. May I be frank? Please. I don't know what you have in mind around here in the way of changes, but I would like to make one thing understood. I run the academic department. That part of the school is not military. I hate to break the bad news to you, but this is a military school. Colonel, society has changed, and people like you, military people, seem, uh, well, they seem so afraid to accept that change. I don't think it's fear of change. When you're in a line of work that requires defending a way of life, you're more inclined to want those changes to be the right ones. You're going to jump into this, aren't you? With both feet. Well, I hope you don't get stepped on. It won't be the first time. Is it Miss, Mrs., or Ms.? I'm not married. And you? Is it Mr., Mr., or Mr.? Colonel. Touche. You didn't say anything in the brochures about haircuts. Me and Mr. T. Look like a baseball player. Can you take a little off the top? Maybe lay the sides a little bit. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Don't desecrate the colors, man. I'll kill your dog, man. Sir, I realize you have a job. Thank you. This is a, a mistake. Please, would you just relax, please? Please don't take too much off. Hey, Davy boy, why don't you stand on top of old Sam and let your tears wash him off? Why don't you leave him alone? You're the one who ought to be scrubbing down, pig pen. problem if you do that again. Woo! A roommate wants to get it on, huh? Come on, Blood. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. You give me your creeping off. What? You what? Spiders, huh? Couple of real heavyweights. Okay. Fifty demerits, clowns. That'll keep you both in your room for a solid month. Tyrone, the radio's turned to be weak. This one's being confiscated. That's all, boys. That's all. Fifty demerits? Don't you think you're taking this a little too seriously, man? If I don't take myself seriously, expect these pleas, look. See, we do things a little differently, Cadet Captain. If I had it my way... Well, you don't. And I'm rescinding the demerits. That's kind of funny. I'm such a better leader than you are. You're wearing my bars. What can I do for you, Benji? Colonel, I thought we had pretty much ironed out our differences. I mean, I've accepted the fact that you're the super, at, at least for two weeks, and that, well, and I'm just the commandant. Well, I think I've been pretty doggone accommodating on this, considering the fact... Benjamin, what can I do for you? The ponies. The boys have their hearts set on a polo team. Scratch the horses. This is not the cavalry. Get a purchase order from Leela, go downtown and get some footballs and basketballs and soccer balls. And Benjamin, it's kind of uncomfortable for the cadets to do their push-ups here after you and your horse have had your daily exercise. Maybe you could find another area to ride on. 
Thank you, Benjamin. Colonel? Colonel, I hate to bother you, but there's a man in your office, a very big, very strange man. Red, Master Gunnery Sergeant Leroy Toller reporting, sir. Ah, you didn't give up leave to come here. Yes, sir. 30 days worth. Well, I'm only here for two weeks. <laughs> Colonel, I can take anything for two weeks. You don't know what you're getting into. I don't know what I'm getting into. This is a school. There's no flight line. The only up fours are up there on the wall. <sighs> yes, I will. I don't know what I was thinking about, Colonel. Place and date of birth. Bolivar, B-O-L-I-V-A-R, Tennessee, March 8th, 1929. Education? <clears throat> well, sir, I didn't make it too far. They asked me to leave along about the ninth grade. Red, I'm going to have to put something down here, otherwise the Board of Education is going to be on my neck. What school? Bolivar, B-O-L-I... I got that. Bolivar Institute for Boys. You were kicked out of reform school? The war on. They needed Marines. Them days, I just had the brains of a tick. I was just full of a lot of BS, that's all. BS? Graduated Bolivar Institute, Bachelor of Science degree. <laughs> What, may I ask, is this? Well, that's a Marine Corps officer's dress blue uniform. Who are you? Oh, Master Gunnery Sergeant Leroy Tuttle, ma'am. Excuse me, Marilyn Coe, our new athletic director and boys' barracks master. And, and maintenance chief. Oh. Ms. Cole is our academic principal and dean of girls. And right now, she is just about at the end of her proverbial rope. I have been teaching school for nine years, Colonel, and in all that time, I have never, I mean never, been told what to wear in a classroom. It's a matter of principle. What you wear off the campus is a matter of principle. What you wear on the campus is a matter of policy and a condition of your employment. You will wear a uniform. Two weeks. I can do anything for two weeks. where they are. Report to Master Gunnery Sergeant Tuttle on the quad. And people, from now on, you will be at attention in this room. You will not speak unless spoken to by me or a member of my staff. And that applies to all cadets. And people, don't worry about wasting the food. You'll still be here tonight. Dismissed. I realize that they were being a little rowdy, Colonel, but don't you think that denying children food is... Captain, I hardly see this as an academic problem to you. Well, no, I don't, Good. but... Then I'll handle it. Open it! Oh. Right! Hey. What? 
are you doing, Cadet Captain Pasco? Teaching the cadets to march, surf. No, 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 no. That isn't what you're doing. 31 years in the Marine Corps, I know what marching is, and this is not marching. God in heaven may know what you people are doing, but I do not. About peace. Not you people. Her. About peace. You are, without a doubt, the worst marcher I have ever seen. I'm a quick learner. You'd better be. Carry on. Here you go. Thanks. Pretty rough out there, huh? You have no idea. That man, he might break those children, but he is not going to break me. Hard knocks indeed. <laughs> it's just a name. Wait, wait. What's that? A book of names. Let's see. Ah, uh, not nah, Knox. Nah. Knox. Nah. Solid as a rock. From the word hill to tonic. Knox stands square-shouldered, committed to his convictions. He will maintain an assured course in his unswerving allegiance to what he knows to be true. Sound like anyone we know? You're bushed, Captain. Why don't you take the rest of the day off? Bushed? I'm as solid as a rock. I guess you've never seen the black lung. Black what? The black lung. At one of our school assemblies, this doctor showed us a lung that they cut out of a man who smoked two What packs. is your name? Jesse Richards, Sergeant. Don't you ever, I mean ever, call me Sergeant again. I happen to hold the rank of Master Gunnery Sergeant in the United States Marine Corps, and I'm very proud of that. So in the future, you will call me Sir, Master Gunny, or Top for short. Do you understand? Sure, Top. Do you cough up phlegm in the morning? Do I what? You're in Company B, right? Yes. Did you know that besides giving you bad breath, cigarette smoking can cause your gums to recede? You leave my gums out of this. You're supposed to be getting your room ready for inspection, Richards. What are you doing in my shop? You don't like kids very much, do you, Sarge? What do you mean, I don't like little kids? You yell louder and more often than any person. I do not yell. I simply communicate in a tone of voice that ensures I will not be misquoted, misunderstood, or ignored. That's what I said. You yell a lot. You listen up, new cadet. Congress might have put you here, but that don't give you the license to give me lectures on the evils of nicotine or color. Congress didn't put me here. My grandmother did. I'll tell you one thing I don't like. I don't like little kids that talk like adults. They make me nervous. So you take it on the heel and toe, young lady, and get back to your company area on the devil. Yes, Sergeant. A hundred guys, and I get stuck with that. You are a creep, Tyrone. A crawly thing from under a rock. Attention on deck! Sir, I respectfully request permission to kick some butt, please. Top. Let's identify it first. Hey, dude. It's about time you guys showed up. I'm ready. Are you under control, Todd? Uh, no, sir. I think you'd better handle this. Mr. Tyrone. I have no idea what transporter beam you came down on. But since you're here, let me welcome you to planet Earth and tell you how we do things here. You have landed at a military school. I am your guide. I hold the rank of Colonel. And from now on, you will call me Sir or Colonel. And if you ever call 
any of my officers or NCOs dude again, I'm going to send you on a trip to a galaxy far, far away. Understood? you wore glasses. Uh, <clears throat> no, sir. Cadet Shaner, if I recall correctly, this is the fourth military school you've attended, is that right? Yes, sir! You all right, sir? Yes, sir. Gentlemen, if this room is any indication of what you're capable of, you'd better take a good look at your roommate. Because without his friendship and cooperation, you're not going to cut it here. Cadet Shaner, you earned yourself ten demerits for not helping your roommates get squared away. <laughs> That's gross. I know, but Top Tuttle said he wanted a spit shine. Oh. Attention! Oh, no, no, it's just me, it's just me. As you are, as you were. <laughs> you two did real well on your first inspection. Thank you. You're welcome. Particularly you, Cammie. I, I thought you did. Do you mind? I'm trying to write a letter. Lights out in ten minutes, girls. Why are you such a snob? What? You act like you're better than the rest of us. Are you? You gosh, Colonel. How long does this crying go on? I cried for two months. I had a roommate that cried for two years. Well, I can stand a lot of things, but I don't know how much more of this I can take. How much I can take? Two weeks. After one o'clock. If you get caught, it's a hundred demerits. I don't care. Running away? They'll just bring you back. They always do. I don't think my mom really wants me to be here. My stepdad. If I could just talk to Ma. Alone. 
Maybe you can kid yourself. If they wanted us, they wouldn't have left us here. You mean your parents don't want you either? What the hell do you think I'm here for? My house? What did I do to make it so they don't want me? I wish I knew. I wish I knew. You know how to button your shirt. You look like a little piglet. Listen up, Mr. Beasley. From now on, you take a little bit more pride in your appearance. You understand? Sir! Yes, sir! All right. Go fall in. Not their fathers, you know. What's the stall? Move it! Move it! Move it! Come on! From now on, you will say attention when an officer walks into a room. Is that understood, Mr. Sayers? Yes, sir. What is that? Uh, that, sir, is a sleeping dog. Come on. Get off the right, mister, now. Hey, dude. Can't you see I'm into some heavy Z's here? Get out of my face. I said, who hit this man? I did, sir. Who is the executive officer of this company? Bridley, sir. Jefferson Bridley. Get these gentlemen out of here. And get Lieutenant Bridley. Yes, sir. Let's call you two. Sorry, sir. I lost my temper. You lost more than that. When an officer strikes an enlisted man, he has lost his ability to lead. And I need leaders. You're demoted to lieutenant. Please, sir, don't do that. Don't take this company away from me. Just restrict my weekends, or... Don't take away my company. That's all I've got. Sir. Cadet Lieutenant Bridley reporting his order. Sir! Cadet Lieutenant Bridley, you're now in command of Company B. Sir, yes, sir. Well, now I'll show you the way a company is supposed to be run. So you busted one of your officers. What's the problem? The problem, sir, is I think I might have made a mistake. Maybe if I had... Since when does a commanding officer have time to deal with maybes and mites? We all make mistakes. You made one, sir. I'm the wrong man for this job, so let's just call it quits before I do more damage. Officers should not be allowed to strike their subordinates. Officers? I have busted more officers in my career, sir, than I care to remember. But these are children. Not only did I bust that boy in rank, I broke his heart. Let me tell you a little bit about young Mr. Pasco. Alcoholic parents, foster homes. We got him right out of juvenile hall. GMA's the only real home. That boy's ever known. Is that supposed to make me feel better, sir? No. It's supposed to refresh your memory. That juvenile hall we got him out of, Joseph, was a lot like the one we got you out of. Pasco, like some others I've known, 
is bullheaded and short-fused. When the pressure was on, he reverted to his street instincts. I busted you, Joseph, twice. Remember? When our cadets leave here, they're going into the same tough world we did. Only their world is tougher, Joseph. Much tougher. I want to see them prepared for it. Don't you? Man, I can't wait to get out of this place for a few days. Lieutenant, my mom was coming in from L.A. He's going to be and a natural, I was too. Maybe Lieutenant, you've like got to get me out of this room away from the animal Tyrone. Shut up! Just shut up and get the hell off of my back! Now, I'm not your big brother, and I'm not your father, and I'm not your CO anymore. He's down the hall. Why don't you check him out? Yeah, I know how you feel. Nott's blew it, man. He totally blew it. Hey, but don't worry about Bridley. A couple of days from now, after I get the saber, I'm gonna have him mucking out the heads. Come on, chin up, Gary. You'll get your command back. Captain Aaron Davis from A Company. What brings you to Company B? Are you looking for votes for a cadet major? <laughs> Bradley, you know, I want you to know that when I do make cadet major, my first official act will be to bust you back to status zero. That's a pledge. Davis, I wouldn't put on the saber just yet. There's a new horse in the race. Or haven't you heard? Would you two shut up? Now, we got a problem here. Knox. Yeah. yeah. We had a good thing going when Benji was in charge. It's not bad enough what this guy's done to our hair. It's not bad enough we have to eat cold food in silence. But we're talking room inspection every night. No wonder the Marines called him hard knocks. The guy's nuts. You know what he did in the day room today? No, what? He caught a couple of guys watching TV on duty time. So he gave our set away to the convalescent home down the street. You're kidding me. I'm not kidding, man. We got to figure out what to do. Attention on deck! As you were. Is the Delta still off limits to plebes? Uh, well, yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. I just wanted to say that the way the Colonel handled the mess hall situation was top rate. And getting rid of the TV was long overdue. Sir! Is there something I can do for you, sir? Would you gentlemen excuse us? Yes, sir. Is there something you want to say to me, son? Son? Yeah, Dad. You looking to bust me again? Go ahead. Why not? Why don't you bust me down to sergeant? Or how about private? Feel free, man. The bird's on your shoulder. I'm going to forget what I just heard, Cadet Lieutenant, and assume that the pressure of the moment has caused you to make an ass of yourself. Don't do me any favors, Colonel. You're only going to be here for two weeks. I can hold my breath for two weeks. You were gone 16 hours. Your punishment will be staying here while the other cadets go home for open house weekend. Is that all, sir? That's all. And David, you'll find that the other cadets don't think too highly of runaways. They can be very cruel. You want to talk? I'll be here. May I go now, sir? Yes. Got a minute, sir? Sure, Top. What can I do for you? This is worse than boot camp out there, sir. Twelve fights yesterday, and that's just the ones I know about. You better come up with something soon to get their minds off each other. We're in a lot of trouble. I know. Top, hold the fort. I'm going to see a man about a brass axe. A brass what? Colonel, as 
as I was saying earlier, we could probably start you out at twice with the old man's paying you down there. The general isn't paying me anything. Well, there it is. Old Tom Evans, our custodian, is the only one who knew what it was. It's a bit dusty. Brass axe. A lot of memories here. A lot of memories here, Major. With our compliments. Oh, no, you misunderstood. The brass axe isn't something you give. It's something you take. And we intend to take it back. You don't mean... Vickers Hill against Garfield? Red and white war. You're serious, aren't you? Absolutely. Red and white war? Are you kidding me? What's a red and white war? Against Vickers Hill, no less. There's no way the old man's getting away with this. I guarantee you, not one cadet volunteers. Not one. Remember, not one. Hey, here comes Red. Ballin', let's go on the devil! No volunteers? No volunteers. I don't want to see any volunteers. You hear that? No volunteers. No volunteers. No volunteers. No volunteers, Pasco. People! Red and white wars. I'm looking for a few good men. And women. Just so nobody gets trampled in a rush, I'll do this company by company. Company A, all those who would like to participate in the red and white war, step forward. How about all you cadets in company B? Cadet Lieutenant Gary Pasco volunteers, sir. Sir, Cadet Sears volunteers, sir. I'll do it, Top. Me too. I'm here. I'm ready. I'll brass axe any fancy sucker that gets in my road. Sir, Cadet Lieutenant Bridley volunteers to recapture the brass axe. Bring it back to Garfield, sir. Thanks a lot, man. Make me look like an idiot in front of the whole battalion. I told you no volunteers. Since when do you tell me anything? Come on, come on, hit me. You're very good at that. I'd love to see you wearing corporal stripes. Look, man, I have a chance to make cadet major. You took yourself right out of it. It's between me and Davis now, and I won. The gold saber. So what's stopping you? What's stopping me? I'll tell you what's stopping me. You went and opened your big mouth, and now we're committed to fight some stupid damn red and white war? All we got is a bunch of snot-nosed kids, girls, screw-offs. And when we get creamed out there, I'm going to be the laughing stock of this whole place. And from now on, you call me, sir. Well, we actually 
get to meet these guys from Vickers Hill? I mean, we'll be able to talk to them and stuff like that. Stuff like what? We're talking warfare here, cadet. Not a damn disco dance. Is this really necessary? I mean, really, getting down in the dirt? It is if you want to meet one of those nice boys from Vickers Hill. Get out of here and get dirty! Hey, David. Shut up! Nobody talks to a runaway. Oh, yeah. I forgot. It isn't our fault his mama doesn't want him. Look who's talking. Don't you ever mention my mother again. She's beautiful. And she loves me. She's busy. That's all. Teamwork, people. Teamwork. We have three days to determine what the term teamwork means. The rule book says you must get over the wall. Doesn't say how. Tyrone, get out of my field of vision. Hmm. Cadet Sayers. Yes, sir. Cadet Richard. Take her heel. Go, Cat! Head aboard! Oh, no. Please don't feel like you have to salute. My arm is getting sore. Yes, Captain? All right. Everybody go around again. Top. Yes, ma'am. I'm curious about something. You've known Colonel Knox a long time. Doesn't it bother him that so many people dislike him? I mean, I realize the importance of discipline and hard knocks and all that, but... I think they actually hate him. These kids came here kind of lots of hate. Right now it's directed at each other. Colonel Locks is just trying to redirect it onto himself, that's all. I don't 
see how he takes it. He's a Marine. Oh. Oh, and Top, I almost forgot. I've arranged a social mixer for tonight. A social what? A social mixer, a dance. We're going to bring some of the cadets to Vickers Hill, and I've arranged for a group of girls from Greenbrier's prep school to go over. Ma'am, I really hope you talk to Colonel Knox about this. Of course I have. And to his strenuous objections, I simply replied that this is an academic activity, not a military one. Yes, ma'am. I'll see you tonight. Yes, ma'am. The most important thing about this evening is to have a good time, all right? I want everybody to enjoy themselves, get to know the cadets and the girls from Vickers Hill. Behave yourself, Eric, all right? You have a good time. Are you excited? Yeah. Good, all right. Have a good time. It's inside. Have a good time. Great you idea. look wonderful. Cadet Pascal, why don't you ask the area here to dance? I'd like to put that big blonde dude right on the floor and dance on his face. You make me sick. Weird? Or is that weird? I don't know. He's different. That one's mine. Girl, there is nothing wrong with asking boys to dance. Well, I can't dance. I can't dance. transfer you over this term. I hate to be a Garfi. Yeah, but maybe I'll be able Could to... Could you introduce me to somebody? Sure, who? Him. Him? That's just Pasco. I told you there was nothing to worry about. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, sir, I was just wondering if I might stop over sometime and you could tell me about the F-18, uh, how it handles. I'd be glad to. Anytime, cadet. Thank you, sir. Tell me, Colonel, why is it that you never attended Vickers Hill? For the same reason our cadets don't. My parents couldn't afford it. Colonel? Marilyn, may I have a stand? Certainly. Hey, Pasco. You haven't got any guts unless you put in on camera. Hey, Gary, come on, do it. Cut in on her. I dare you. <clears throat> what do you got to lose? Teeth? <laughs> Excuse me. Can I cut in? Thanks for the dance, Kemi. You're welcome. That's a lot, Pasco. Said it was important. Where is he? He's downstairs. All right, thank you. Sir, uh, Tactile was 
looking for you outside. Thank you, cadet. May I cut in? No. Hey, Mage, the head dude wants you outside. Hip, hip. Uh, can you handle the records for me? They're all in order. Oh, yeah, sure, Mage. You go right ahead. See me? No, because that Shainer said that you wanted to see me, Todd. Captain Cole has put forth a lot of effort to give you people a little break in your routine. I'm sure she appreciates your thank you. Major, GMA apologizes to Vickers Hill. Take it so hard. It was a good try, kid. I really appreciate your efforts. several fights, failed every one of your inspections, and they're flunking all of your grades. So, kick me out. You'd like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> hey, man, sir. Sir. I don't belong here. So why don't you save yourself some aggravation? and save my grandfather some cash and put me back on the street where I belong. You know what I think? I think you're feeling guilty. Because your grandfather loves you so much, he floated alone to get you off the street and to put you in here. I'll tell you what my problem is. My problem is you and everybody like you. Tell me when to get up, when to eat, when to sleep. You know what I want? I want control, man. For once in my life, I want control. Why didn't you say so? An airplane has three basic control movements. Roll, which is controlled through the yoke, moves the ailerons like this. Yaw, which moves the aircraft from side to side, is controlled by the pedals, moves the rudders. Pitch, which moves the elevator up and down with the yoke. What are you doing now? 
Putting the plane on autopilot? <laughs> Look how smooth as she flies by herself. Put your hand on the oak. Huh? Go ahead. Very gently. Now, press that button. What does that do? That releases the autopilot. Hey, what are you doing, man? You said you wanted control. You've got control. No! Better pull back on that yoke. Push back on the yoke or we're going into orbit. Gently, push back gently. On one smooth motion, put your right foot on the pedal. And your left hand on the yoke. Hey, don't slash me, man. I'm really flying this sucker? I'm not slashing you, man. You're in control. Hey, let's put this sucker on afterburner. <laughs> We're the white team. Vickers Hill is the red team. And this is our objective. To get their flag and to cross the finish line first. It lies 13 miles due north of GMA and 13 miles south of Vickers Hill. There will be referees to keep score. Each team will be issued one map, one compass, and one first aid kit. Excuse me. Yes, Captain Cole. What about guns and bullets? I mean, this is a war. These are your weapons. Nine balloons filled with white dye. Vickers will have red. When one of you gets hit with the balloon, and you will, you're out. Period. I wish you well, people. And I want you to try your hardest. And that's the best you can do. Lieutenant Bridley assures me that he has your battle plan well in hand. You departed 0800. So get a good night's rest. And remember the magic words. Maximum utilization of available resources. Good night. Bickers! 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 Yeah. Bickers! 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 Yeah. Bickers! 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 Look, they knew what they were getting into. If they can't cut it, 
tough. I'm going to cross the finish line. Oh, that's just super. The hell with the rest of us. We'll hail the great leader. I'm finished. And so are the little ones. I'm finished messing with you too, fool. <laughs> Don't you Get your claws off my roommate, quick. Lighten up. Now just back off. Now nobody here is finished until we're all finished. I'm starting to see the picture now. The great Pasco is going to take over. Going to save the day? No, man. It's not what I'm going to do. And it's not what you're going to do. It's what we're going to do. Now we're going to start acting like a team. Maximum utilization of available resources. Want to give it a try? Yeah. Let's get him! <laughs> <laughs> Now we're disqualified. I knew he'd run away. I knew it. What now, Pasco? I don't care if we are disqualified. We're going to finish. Let's move out. Oh, man. Out of here, Major. Our polo team's playing Seton today for the championship. They're pretty worked up about that. Ah, that's where Benjamin is. In fact, we can just make it back if the boys hurry. Hey! Where'd everybody... Don't leave me alone! You promised you wouldn't leave me alone! I lost my glasses! What's the matter, little Garf? Did you get left behind? I get the honor. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are stupider than I am. Grandmother. Oh, yeah, little Jessie. I just wanted to say thank you for being so good to her. She writes about you in all her letters. Really? That little girl's had a hard go of it. Her mother's dead. Was raised by her father. You do know that he died last year. No, I didn't. Well, that's why I sent her to Garfield. See, all her life, people have been babying her. With all the right motives, of course, but... Everybody feels so sorry for her, they won't let her grow up. Miss Richards, how did uh, Jesse's father die? My son was a heavy smoker.
four. Okay. Cammy, you ready? Listen, generic. I'm doing this under protest. I mean, what are you doing here? We want to watch you cream those guys. All right. You got front row seats. You want a cold drink or something? Sure. Give you one more shot. Let's go. Why are you doing this? You still don't get it, do you? This is a team. You're the fastest person on the team. Move out!
There is a tradition here at Garfield that one cadet be chosen to serve as cadet major and lead the battalion for the coming year. It hasn't been an easy choice for me. We have several cadets whose academic record, whose all-around leadership abilities more than qualify them to hold this honored position. But as in past years, there is one cadet who stands out. One cadet who didn't wait for the saber to be awarded him, but stepped forward and took it. Cadet Lieutenant Gary Pasco, front and center. Colonel, I'm proud to present our new cadet major. Cadet Major Pasco. You'll find that saber a heavy burden if you try to carry it alone. Dismiss your troops for the weekend. Be double timing on this walk? Yes, Sergeant. You're proud of me, aren't you, Top? A little bit. Well, goodbye. Cadet. Get rid of these for me. I love you. Paul, get out of here. If I ever see you again, you better be standing tall. We kind of... We kind of all wanted to say thank you for, you know, for what you did for us. So, we all pitched in, and we got you this. this time, sir. You didn't get a draft notice, Top. You volunteered, remember? 
What do you say we give them a little surprise of our own and show up on Monday morning? 